Yo, in the fourth episode, we're about to mount brakes, bearings, and tires. So, without further ado, let's hop right into it. We're relieving here the shock absorber with the hoist on, and then we pull on slightly, and then slide into these guided noses here. We now have to get the input shaft out of here, as you can see. That already has remarkable tap locations. We'll use the new one. Whether there is bearing clearance in the fork, or whether it's still okay or knocked out. But this seems to be just fine. Although some things are not that beautiful here. Did you see this? Simply paint it over the dirt. This must get beaten out into that direction. Pay attention, here is a spacer. It's always better if you fix the fork in your hand, because each stroke also goes to the steering head bearings. But in a normal case they survive. Anyway, it will be good when Ralph holds against it and I'll just punch. Bam! There it is. Now you see the spacer is hiding there. That usually happens because it sticks in the grease, especially if it's old fat. This is the spacer on the other side. Yes, as you notice you have such top locations. The bearing does not run smoothly. Old, new. A bit of cleaning. You have to give me two new bearings here for the input shop. This is Oli. He's a specialist in the shop. And I believe he knows every part of all Vespa models. Can identify them and he might even know the item number by heart, right? Not exactly, but soon. <laughs> the bearings are not encapsulated in the past. That one is still open. And so the file cannot go away because of this felt ring. So that practically no dust and no dirt comes into the bearing. The modern encapsulated bearings are more insensitive. Here you can see it pretty well. Not encapsulated. Old style from the 50s. And plastic encapsulated. Not so vulnerable to dirt. There's a wonderful notch here. If you use a bit of grease, it will stay there easily. By no means is grease in this area. When it gets hot, it will end up in the brake pads, and that isn't good at all. First, the brake pad all the way forward. Then hang it at the first position. And then hang the other side. Can you hear the metallic sound? Step one, first a large bearing. Anschließend. Mm -hmm. Then the axis comes in. Next comes the distance ring and in the end the small bearing. Now you can also hear the sound of the touching felt ring. This small race must be on the inner side. And now you bolt it right, but not too tight. And we just bolt it in here. First the axis can go nowhere and it runs nicely. When the models in the mid 50s came on the market, there haven't been regulations for speedos. But everything is already prepared. They had speedometers as accessories.
The fender light models have no brake light, but there's an adapter so you can use this brake light switch. With the SIP cable loom, the cables are already pre-configured and the adapter can be installed and fixed with this small chain. And now we have brake lights. Well, that doesn't look that bad so far, right? In the next and final episode, we mount the exhaust and do more fine tuning, especially at the carburetor. If you enjoyed this video, we'd very much appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the bell.